Hello, everybody, and welcome to Taking Control, the ADHD podcast on True Story FM. I'm Pete Wright, and I'm here with Nikki Kinzer. Hello. Hello, everyone. Hello, Pete Wright. How you doing? I'm glowing. You look great. Not because I'm pregnant. No. (laughs) I don't know. You have a nice, warm light about you today. Yes. I'm still working tweaking, with some new lights. But it's very exciting. Oh, it's yes. so exciting. They're they're not set yet, but I do feel, I feel the glow coming you do. on. You feel the glow. Yeah. It's yeah. right there. Uh, right well, we're very excited about that. And we are also going to continue our conversation today about uh, uh, being an entrepreneur with ADHD, particularly in the neurodiverse space. And uh, we have a fantastic guest that is actually a throwback, a callback guest to two weeks ago. Uh, when we had our fantastic guest, uh, Jamie Catino on. So we're, we're continuing that conversation with her business partner. Can't wait to talk about that. Before we do that, though, head over to TakeControlADHD.com. You can get to know us a little bit better. You can listen to the show right there on the website or subscribe to the mailing list, and we will send you an email each time a new episode is released. You can connect with us on Facebook or Instagram or Pinterest at Take Control ADHD. But to really connect with us, join us on our ADHD Discord community. It's super easy to jump in the general community chat channel. Just visit TakeControlADHD.com slash Discord, and you'll be taken right over to the general invitation page. If you're looking for a little bit more, particularly if this show has ever touched you or helped you to understand your relationship with ADHD in a new way, we invite you to support the show directly through Patreon. Patreon is listener-supported podcasting. With a few dollars a month, you can help guarantee that we continue to grow the show, add new features, and invest more heavily in our community. And speaking of Discord, my goodness, once you get into Patreon, a lot of channels open up. So many channels. Uh, it is really, really fun. And uh, you, at, 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 you know, at, at one tier, you can join me and Nikki for uh, individual, uh, not individual, but for uh, Coffee with Pete and Coaching with Nikki. We talk about technology and ADHD coaching once a month each. Uh, it's really fantastic. Uh, so head over there, patreon.com slash the ADHD podcast to get started. Nikki, do we, we, we have some news. We do. We have some news. So if you are a Patreon member and you're listening to this episode early, like right now, Mm -hmm. a benefit offered to our Patreon supporters, group coaching enrollment is still open. So if you're listening to this early, it is still open. There are still spots available for both groups, the ADHD book club uh, and breaking down the overwhelm with ADHD. Uh, However, space is limited and spots are filling up. So don't wait to sign up. There is room right now, but the deadline to enroll is next Wednesday, February 22nd. So if you're listening to this after February 22nd, definitely put your name uh, down for uh, your our wait list for the next group that are coming up. Outstanding. It looks like it's going to be a great season of groups. We're very, very excited to get those started. So get your name in quick. And uh, also, I, I don't know if you knew this, Nikki, we're talking about business today. Yes. Yeah. And, you and know, what uh, better tool can you have as a business person you can't whether <laughs> you are a business owner or just in anything any kind anything. it doesn't even have to be business it if you're writing if well, you're writing on a computer <laughs> you should have this tool but you i want to talk tool. about how i use it specifically for a few features of my business we're talking of course about my best software friend text expander one of my favorite invisible tools in my tool chest it's always there running in the background waiting for me to type an abbreviation or a snippet in text expander speak and when it sees that snippet it goes to work instantly expanding from just a few characters on my keyboard to words sentences paragraphs entire pages of text here's how it works you store it first you keep your most used emails phrases messages numbers urls you put them in the text expander library then you assign each of those uh, those phrases words etc an abbreviation then you share the library potentially with other people that you work with and then you expand it as you're typing you type the abbreviation boom it opens up to the entire email that you just stored now how do i use text expander for my business It's going to seem stupidly obvious when I say this. Account and routing numbers. My goodness. You need to set up an ACH deposit with a new client? Text Expander knows my bank account number. How about that routing number? I know. I know it's in the footer on the website of my bank. I know it's there, but why should I have to go fishing when Text Expander knows it? I have a client that I have to bill each year, and they're in the Netherlands. They need my incoming wire transfer instructions that includes both that accounting account and routing number plus a SWIFT number. SWIFT number? 
who remembers the Swift numbers? Text Expander does. That's right. And I set up all my snippet abbreviations in my snippet library with dollar signs at the beginning to make sure that they're easily grouped together in a massive snippet list and super easy to find when I use the forward slash search shortcut to bring up the snippet search window. So even better, I'm on two teams that both use Text Expander, and I hope you'll explore the team features too. The way Text Expander says it, your team's knowledge is at their fingertips, including those important numbers that others on your team might need to use. Get your whole team on the same page by getting information out of silos and into the hands of everyone that needs to use it. Share your team's knowledge across departments so your team is sending a unified message to your customers and isn't spending time reinventing the wheel. Text Expander is available on Mac, Windows, Chrome, iPhone, iPad, and for listeners of the ADHD podcast, you can get 20% off your first year of service. Just visit TakeControlADHD.com slash Text Expander and you will be whisked over to our page on their website where you can get started. Again, if you get started now, you'll save 20% off your subscription. The way we work is changing rapidly. Make work work the way your brain works by saying more in less time and with less effort using Text Expander. Our great thanks to the Text Expander team for sponsoring the ADHD podcast. And now, Nikki, I think I think we get we should get to business. Shall we get to business? Let's do it. Let's go, let's go find Maggie. Maggie. Maggie Isley is a designer, coach, and speaker. She's the co-founder and creative director of 929 Studios, where she works with businesses around the world to form cohesive brand identities. She's also the co-founder of Be Unemployable, a podcast and educational brand for neurodivergent entrepreneurs with our new best friend of the show, Jamie Coutinho. Maggie joins us today to talk about her work with neurodivergent entrepreneurs and how to get unstuck in our professional growth. Maggie, welcome to the ADHD podcast. Thanks for having me. I'm psyched. Wow, where do we start? I watched your TED Talk. It was so good. (laughs) And what I love, you know, there was a a couple of different takeaways, but I think one of the things I really want to dig into today, especially, is that connection between uh, therapy and uh, coaching. Because what you said about clients coming to you feeling stuck and feeling like it's a business problem resonated so much with me and what I do with my own clients too. So I definitely want us to dig into that for sure. But why don't you tell our audience a little bit about who you are and uh, how you got onto your own podcast with uh, uh, Be Unemployable, which we love the name. (laughs) (laughs) And your whole business. So yeah, give us a little background information about you. All right. Awesome. So I always draw a blank when people ask me that because that's, <laughs> I'm always like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know anything about myself. Who like, am I? <laughs> right. I'm like, I have no idea. Whatever you've heard, it's probably true. Um, yeah. I do have my own podcast. I used to have a pod. Well, I have like two, I have two podcasts and I have one with my husband mm-hmm. and that's what really got my feet wet. And mm-hmm. then I have this one. And it wait, used wait, to be I gotta, I'm sorry. I have to stop. A podcast with your husband. What's that like? Amazing. Is it really? Yeah. We started it one day. So one day we went out for dessert. Like we just went to this little, it's a pub underneath a really fancy restaurant. Mm-hmm. And he said, I want to do something creative with you. And it was years and years ago. like. 2017 maybe okay and okay. he was like i want to do something creative and i was like we were trying to come up with ideas and we talked about like maybe a script like a screenplay like we were trying to come up with ideas and he was somehow we settled on a podcast and we didn't it was before the market was what it is now mm-hmm. and we had it up and running in about two weeks mm-hmm. but we didn't know likes we had nothing and mm-hmm. you're still married. We've been married. It'll be 21 years this year. Oh, congratulations. Wow. That's lovely. Well, so what did you guys talk about? Like your marriage or did you guys talk about other things? All right. Are you ready for the title? Because it's still uh-huh. around. We just haven't. <laughs> we've only done like one episode okay. this year. But okay. we've done like over 100 episodes. Wow. Um, it's called Couple Goals with S&M. 
because <laughs> his name's Sean and mine is Maggie. <laughs> So it's a comedy oh podcast. It's, it's a podcast where he brings a topic and I bring a topic and we do not share the same interests. Mm-hmm. So he has to listen to my topic and I and he, and I listen to his. Ugh. And then we have our commentary on each other's topics. Oh, so I like to talk what you guys about think. That... He likes to talk about comic books and movies and I like to talk about true crime oh me too (laughs) and yeah so he hates true crime and i i'm not the biggest fan of comic books i mean like i like i like the movies but i'm not trying to read comic books right and i have learned so much so, I yeah, bet. My goodness. I so, love that so much. What I mean, yeah, it's a total distraction, but I feel like I could talk to you about couple goals with S and M for oh ages. Uh, that will it's be so absolutely fun. in the show notes. That <laughs> was the first, that's, that was my foray though into podcasting. Yeah, so yeah. then, right. then I started um, extraordinary entrepreneur mm-hmm. and that was my, that was my solo podcast. Mm-hmm. And I was like, okay, I'm going to do this. It'll be so fun. But then it just became me talking to myself. Mm-hmm. And I was like, well, this is, this it's is a less bummer, fun. huh? Le- less fun. I was like, <laughs> there's nobody to talk to. So my episodes were like six minutes long of me going like, so this isn't, this is, this is what I think today. <laughs> and I was like, I don't really like this at all. <laughs> and I was going to bring on a co-host and that didn't work out. And, I met Jamie and you've heard this. Yeah. If you've heard this, mm-hmm. if you've heard this podcast, you know the story. Yeah. So when Jamie and I were talking and I was like, so are you asking me to go study or like, what are we doing here? <laughs> so cute. Yeah. And she came on and she was just a natural fit. Yeah. But I had this whole vision where the podcast was going to become a big brand. Mm-hmm. And she was like, I'm in. And I was mm-hmm. like, that's it. Then you're the right you're the right partner for me. Yeah. 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 That's great. And that's where we're at. I, I want to talk uh, about, and I recognize that I own the responsibility of completely distracting us with the whole S&M thing. But uh, I want to I want to go back to this transition that you made to that last point, which is you decided that uh, that your brain was going to be perfect for being an entrepreneur building brands. And a lot of people who listen to this show have not been able to make that make that switch. In fact, they look at their brains as a boat anchor toward their efforts to, you oh. know, cr- create something. Right? Like there is a lot of of shame and self doubt and all the things that go into creating new things in the world. And I'm curious how you managed to navigate through the complexities of your own identity. To do good stuff. Well, here's the cool thing about boat anchors. You get to pull them up mm-hmm. and move. Yeah. I didn't so even temporary. know that was going to be a leading metaphor, They're, but I'm so glad it. you They're picked it up. They're temporary. They don't yeah. have to be. Yeah. 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 That's great. Yeah. That's the cool thing about boat anchors is like they're, you get to pull them up and move. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You're not a tree. Like these aren't, these aren't your roots that you have to abide by forever. Mm-hmm. Like the way that, so my journey, if you haven't watched my TED talk and I don't expect you to have watched it to listen to this podcast. So but we'll put it in clear. the show notes. So mm-hmm. yeah, you can check it out. But you absolutely should because it's amazing and I'm fantastic. <laughs> it is. It, but, it is. It's very good. <laughs> I highly recommend it. <laughs> <laughs> but my journey was, I, I grew up believing that I needed to follow a certain path. We mm-hmm. all do. I mean, like, I feel like we all grow up thinking, oh, well, I'm going to grow up and I'm going to be a marine biologist or like whatever it is that you think you're going to do. Right. Mm-hmm. And I did the same thing. I thought I'm going to grow up and I'm going to follow this path that my parents think is are the best path for me. And it's um, it wasn't. It wasn't a good path. I didn't like it. Didn't like it one bit. And I had to follow it for a very long time before I realized that it wasn't the right path for me. So when someone feels stuck, that's normal. That's normal. 
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's not, it's not bad. It's a normal part of being a person. If you continue to stay stuck, that's where there's a problem. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that's what my talk was all about is how coaches and therapy really go hand in hand, how coaches identify the issue because we get to see you more mm-hmm. than a therapist does. Mm-hmm. Like we get to see you all the time. We get to see you in the thick of it. Whereas mm-hmm. therapists might only get to see you once a week or once every other week. Right. And they don't get to see you when you're dealing with a work problem or dealing with whatever it is. They get to see you when you come in and go, so-and-so did this and it triggered me and this happened. You, when you come into therapy, or at least when I come into therapy, I have like a list. Mm-hmm. Like, this happened. Mm-hmm. Yes. And I want to talk about it right now. Yeah. yeah. Whereas a coach has a very different view. So for me, I'm able to go, hey, I think this might be stemming from this. Can you take that to your therapist mm-hmm. and see yeah. what comes up? And all of a sudden, you unravel an issue you didn't know was there. But to me, you're walking around with a giant sign over your head. What was so interesting about your your talk, and I know you you work with entrepreneurs, but I really related it not only to my clients who are entrepreneurs, but to clients who are just in jobs that they don't like, mm-hmm. or they feel stuck, or they feel trapped, you know, and they're really unhappy, but they're not really sure how to get out or if they can get out. Um, and that that's really what resonated too. So t- I, I want to know more like about the trauma. You talk about trauma and you talk about how it, how it goes into business. Exp- go into further detail. I'm really interested in that. I did talk about that in my TED talk and I'm hesitant to talk about it on, it didn't too deep. Cause again, I am not yeah. licensed. I'm not a licensed. Yeah, it's true. Please, right, please, right. We're not there. Yeah. Everybody know coach. And Mm. this is something else that I say very loudly in my TED talk. Coaching is not the same as therapy. Please, everybody. Mm -hmm. And I know you guys know that, but I always want to say that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, very important. It's not a replacement. They go hand in hand. They skip off into the sunset together. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. But trauma impacts everything, Mm -hmm. right? Like it isn't just oh, I had this happen in my childhood, but don't worry, I'm going to go color and this should fix it. Like, I'll just heal my inner child and I should be fine. Okay. It, it should, that should help some things. But when you show up at work, you're, you settle for a lot less because you are always a people pleaser at home. Mm-hmm. Like these tendencies that... I have a cat on my lap. So if you hear meowing, (laughs) I love that. (laughs) But um, these tendencies that you developed from your traumatic experiences, they show up in your business. They show up in your life. They show up by settling for less when you're miserable in a job in a nine to five. They show up. uh, I mean, our friend Jamie, who we all love Mm -hmm. they showed up when she wasn't willing to go out and sell her services at the beginning Mm -hmm. because of rejection issues Mm -hmm. trauma is prevalent well after big t and little t i mean it's prevalent in our lives for Mm -hmm. me personally i'll gladly speak to my trauma i was raised by narcissists so for a long time being me was a horrible, horrible thing to be. Like being mm-hmm. myself. Mm-hmm. When I did my TED Talk, it's on three different channels on YouTube. It's on the TED, the TEDx channel. Mm-hmm. It's on my channel and it's on Case Western Reserve's channel. Mm-hmm. Sure. My family that I no longer speak with attacked me publicly oh the comments. Oh dear and that right there tells you 
what it's like to run a business when you still have trauma. Why did they attack you? Wow. Because they're not through their trauma? The comment was, you sound like someone who had, and they left their real, <laughs> left comments in their real names too. You sound like someone who hasn't worked or who, who blames everybody else for their misfortunes. Mm -hmm. Now, as people who have heard my talk, my talk is about accepting radical responsibility. Absolutely. Yeah. It's a complete it's opposite the exact of that. opposite of that, right. And they talk about how I need to learn how to accept responsibility for my life. And I'm like, um, so they didn't hmm. actually listen my friends. to it. That, yeah. My friends. Okay. So trauma impacts every part of your, of your life, whether mm -hmm. or not you're, you've healed from it or not. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's well, a muscle. It's a muscle. And, and that's the thing that gets me when we talk about this stuff is the insidious nature through which as you say, capital T, little t, trauma, insinuates itself into your the operation of your business, right? How can you be a capital E or lowercase e entrepreneur if you are still dealing with your own trauma and you can't recognize it as such? Exactly. It's, it's very important to have another set of eyes, whether that be, it doesn't have to be a coach if you're not comfortable with that. It could just be your best friend, your spouse, someone mm -hmm. who you trust to keep an eye on you and say, Hey, that reaction, that was, you were right. very triggered. That was, that was a, that was a trauma response. Yeah. yeah. That's not someone who you're not afraid to hear from when yes. they say things that could potentially be disruptive. Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You need to have that other set of eyes mm -hmm. to really keep you in check, essentially, mm -hmm. because it happens to me. And I've been working on this for years. And it's still happening. But it's worth it to me to continue to, you know, like, I still go to, <laughs> I still go to therapy. Mm -hmm. Sure. Like, yeah. Otherwise, that comment would have made me been like, don't tell anybody about my TED talk. Mm -hmm. It's a right. secret. Mm -hmm. You know, but yeah. instead, I'm like, that's a perfect example of what I was talking about in my yeah. TED talk. Right. Mm -hmm. right. That's mm -hmm. exactly what I was referring to. Mm -hmm. Is there is there any data to support just how many people are struggling with this with this kind of stuff in starting their own businesses and running their own businesses? How is that? Yes. I mean, is it possible to track that? So I have an entire folder and I actually had to provide it. When, so when you give a TEDx talk. Mm -hmm. You can give like, a, hey, this is my personal story. That's mm -hmm. fine. Mm -hmm. That's great TEDx talk. But for the TEDx talk I gave where it does border on scientific, you have to provide. The like, receipts. Yeah. Some stat like, for research. Yeah. You have to provide. Right. So I have an entire folder. If anybody would like to see it, <laughs> uh, I I have a whole folder of scientific studies. The studies of people who just have a hard time holding a job from the trauma that they've and it it doesn't have anything to do with the the outlying issues that can come with trauma which would be you know your addiction issues and the other things that come with that people who experience trauma are more inclined to just lose a job just lose a job mm -hmm. not even not be able to start a business mm -hmm. Once they are able to overcome things like that, then they have a hard time starting a business. Then they have. And then when you look at the fact that trauma has loose connections, not confirmed. This is something I also researched with neurodevelopmental disorders. That's mm. something they're currently studying. Again, not confirmed. Please don't don't put my name next mm -hmm. to that. But because of the frontal lobe. Mm -hmm. And this is so what you were said, talking about in your in your TED talk though, right? About the executive yes. functions, how those are effective and are um, effect, affected. And then you have ADHD on top of that. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of chaos going on there. Trauma affects your entire brain. Mm -hmm. And when it affects your brain to begin with, then you add in, are neurodevelopmental disorders. Mm -hmm. 
the ability mm -hmm. to start a business, the ability to hold a job. That's why to me being unemployable is a feather in my cap. Right. I don't fit in and I'm mm -hmm. okay with that mm -hmm. because that I'm a pro I'm a product of what I had no control over when I was younger, but I found a way to make it work. It's so inspirational. So I'm really curious about uh, in your own experience, because I know we're not, neither one of us, Pete or I are not therapists either. So we totally get where you're coming from. But from your own experience. It would be awesome what, if I was a therapist and just never told you. And just never that told be, me. That yeah, would be just, like, kept it a huge secret. <laughs> also, I'm an astronaut. After 20 Sorry. plus years of <laughs> yeah, us knowing right. each other. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Guess what? Um, <laughs> no, Big but reveal. I'm curious yeah. from your own experience, Maggie, like, you noticed this about yourself. And so you knew you had some healing to do. You knew that there was therapy that you needed to, to uh, help break open your own business, right? What does that look like? Because I'm curious to know, and maybe this is black and white thinking in a way, like what, what does it look like to be stuck and then say, hey, I'm talking to you as a coach, but I think it'd be really helpful for you to go to a therapist too. And then now the doors are opening. What does it look like when you go through that door? For the client or for me? Yeah, for, well, for you as you, because you went through it or your client's experience, whatever you've seen. I'm just curious where that transition, transformation happens. So I can take you back a little bit further if you really want to go deep. Sure. Sure. We're willing to go deep. <laughs> like I'm <laughs> so deep. I'm, a, I'm let's go so deep, you guys. <laughs> so, so deep, so deep right now. <laughs> oh, my let's do God. it. So, so listen, no, for real. <laughs> so, so the way I figured it out, like the way that I understood that this was the connection, me personally, is we were foreclosed on in 2010. Mm -hmm. And my husband was afraid to tell me. Yeah. Oof. Yeah. Now, my husband is amazing. Like I said, 21 years of marriage this yeah. year. Mm -hmm. And it was over like a very small dollar amount, like $5,000 small. Mm -hmm. It wasn't the mortgage. It was association dues at a condo. Oh, my goodness. Oh, and he was afraid to tell me because of my reaction. Mm -hmm. And that's when I knew that there was more to me and needing therapy and healing. Now, I wasn't working. I was working for a company, but I knew that I needed therapy. Mm -hmm. And I had a choice to make. Is it was either I heal or begin healing mm -hmm. or I, I kick him out, which is what most people would do. Most people would be like, you got, you've got to go. Like, this is unacceptable. I can't open my door and see some guy saying, Hey, your house goes to auction in two days. Why are you still here? Mm -hmm. Which is right. exactly what happened. And I nearly, it was not good. So mm -hmm. in that, in that time I had two small children and went, no, I'm the problem here. I mean, yes, we needed open communication. But the reason when I asked why he didn't tell me, he said it was because he was afraid of me. Mm. Hard to so hear, I, I'm sure. Horrible to hear. Yeah. And when I realized that and I began my journey, that allowed me to see all of the red flags in everybody else. Mm. And I, I'm also autistic, which then made me realize how many patterns I was seeing without understanding them. Mm -hmm. And when I walked through that door into healing and I understood, hey, I'm a lot smarter than I think I am. I'm a lot more aware than I think I am. And I really want to be better. And I went on that journey. 
I started my business six years later. We, we own this home. Mm-hmm. Yay. We own the mm-hmm. home we're sitting in. We broke six figures in 2020 after being foreclosed on 10 years earlier, a decade earlier. Mm-hmm. And I was able, I'm able to help my clients with this because I've been through it. Right. Right. I've been through that moment where someone says, Hey, I'm afraid of you. Hey, I can't, I can't talk to you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and what then you go from there. Go ahead. And you go from Sorry. there. What what is so amazing about that is the I don't know if it's the reflection piece of okay, wait a minute, it's me. Like this is I feel like Taylor Swift, the song. Hey, it's me. I'm the problem. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Cue the Taylor Swift song, please. It's me. <laughs> yeah. If only uh, we could I'm afford the license fees. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, but what I think is so inspirational about that, Maggie, is that it, it, it's possible. And I think it's really important for people to hear that is that uh, first reaction could have been walls going up. I, like you said, you're kicked out. I can't believe you deceived me like this, however you're taking it. Right. Um, but to be able to actually have that self reflection and, and awareness of, wait a minute, this isn't how I want to be perceived by him either. Right. This isn't what I want. Um, and that almost kind of goes into what you were talking about in this personal, re- like personal responsibility of, mm-hmm. of this information that you now have about yourself. You knew you needed to go to therapy. Uh, can you talk a little bit about that more? Because the personal responsibility really hit me too when I was watching, watching you. Yeah, it's personal responsibility is something that people throw around now, like at least I hear it a lot. And I hear it almost as a victim blame mentality. And I wanted to bring it to the stage in a different way. Mm -hmm. It's not that. It is a look at yourself, see if there's something you don't like, Accept responsibility. Hey, this part of me sucks. Like, what is that about? Ugh. And then see what the root cause is. Because yes, you can change superficially. But look, until you figure out what that root cause is, you're going to revert. Mm-hmm. I know, because I still have moments where I revert. And it's mm-hmm. human nature. Mm-hmm. Right. It's human nature. It's it's okay. It's this is a shame-free zone. Like, it's okay. But you, that therapy yeah. helps. Yeah. It, it, you, I mean, the way you talk about, the way you just spoke about seeing those patterns that unravel around you as once you become aware of it. I mean, to me, I, so that's, that's like the batter Meinhof of it, right? It's like, oh, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm looking for a Volkswagen and now all I see are Volkswagens. So suddenly everybody must be thinking about Volkswagens. But the truth is that can become an incredibly powerful tool once you're aware of it to learn from the patterns around you. And uh, with, you know, our our spectrum of neurodiverse brains around this show, the idea that we can actually harness that sort of frequency illusion to help us learn something about ourselves is really, really important. And I, I think it's it's okay to deeply invest in learning new things about yourself, even if it's for a short or medium term, um, mm-hmm. because you'll be changed on the other side of it, right? Like that, yep. that just sort of feels like rather than carrying on the fact that I, I could choose to feel shamed about my past experience, I could totally choose to do that. And that would suck. Uh, I could also just choose to learn from it and see, see what my life would be like if I decided to maybe try and break some of those patterns. It's like exactly. what we were talking about with the anchor. You have the choice to pull up the anchor. And yeah. I think when we're talking about responsibility, it empowers you, you know, because it gives you that choice of I don't have to be stuck. I don't have to sit here and uh, and be unhappy. You know, um, it, it, it gives you that that empowerment to make a different yeah. choice or to do something different. Absolutely. Like, and I couldn't I couldn't agree more. What kinds of things do you do with your clients as a coach? I'm curious. So we go every, at, we go literally everywhere from concept of a business 
mm-hmm. all the way through they're hiring, they're growing, they're scaling. Yeah. I because I do own an agency, a branding agency, that's how I started. Mm-hmm. Actually, how I started was a blog, but that's another time. <laughs> so but I do everything. So like last month I had a client here for 10 days and we shot video for her. It's actually not a course. It's like a digital download kind of thing. Mm -hmm. We shot videos and we did all that for her offer. I have earlier today, I booked another four days with a client. She's coming into town because I do have a studio that I work out of and she's coming here so we can do some pictures because We've done her website and I don't like any of the pictures she has. So mm-hmm. she's coming to town. So yeah, we do everything from, hey, this is this is my idea. And when you have ADHD, it's difficult to yeah. narrow it down to an yeah. idea. Hey, this is my thousand ideas that I have. And so, yeah. How do I do this? Yeah. yeah. Hey, I'm curious you're helping them write that everything. down. Yeah, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm curious how your clients relate to not just the the creative ideas and the production ideas, but the counseling ideas, the ideas that say, hey, let's let's get over the lower T trauma so that we can get to the creative stuff. As, you know, what's the experience like talking to people who maybe haven't been spoken to the way you speak to them? I literally tell them that this is how we're going to communicate in a, I call it a clarity call. It's essentially a discovery call or a sales mm-hmm. call, mm-hmm. but I will not take on a one-on-one client until we've had one of those. Mm-hmm. And I talk to them like that in a call mm-hmm. and I see how they react. And I will not, this is where I'm a little different than a lot of people when it comes to, and I'm using air quotes for everybody who cannot see me, <laughs> sales calls, yeah. because I will not let you sign up with me the same day we speak. Mm-hmm. I want you to process everything that we talked about. You need about. a waiting period. <laughs> mm-hmm. yes. You need to process everything we talked about. And because ADHD people like like myself are very mm-hmm. impulsive, you will give me your card when we hang up. Like I know I know if you want change as badly as mm-hmm. I want to change that you're going to be like, let me pay you now. And I'm mm-hmm. yeah. absolutely not. You cannot pay me now. I need you to process everything I said to you, how I spoke with to you, because I am harsh. I'm not harsh. I'm not like, get your butt up and like, no, I'm not yeah. like that. But I am like, hey, tell me a little bit more about this, that, this, that. I think it's stemming from this, this, this. I need you to go to therapy. Mm-hmm. I know you want to build your business tomorrow, but you're not ready for that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I also ask clients to stop working with me until they process things. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. I've had clients leave after three months because I don't want to work with them anymore until they process things. There's a whole vibe to that. That's that's not only are you modeling good, good truth to power behavior. That's like, hey, I'm I'm as a as a, you know, a creative partner and. Uh, you know, 1099, I'm willing right. to say things to you that maybe you're not accustomed to hearing from people that you're paying. I'm going to break through an entitlement wall that you might yeah. expect as a service provider. I don't really have much respect for those entitlement walls. Um, but also uh, what I want to do is treat you how to speak to yourself, right? I, I want mm-hmm. you to recognize patterns that need to be broken if you're going to break through to some new level of of success. Are you able to take all these, uh, all of your own advice? Sometimes. <laughs> Other times, my husband literally will say to me, do you know what you just, you know, what you said to the client? Like, cause he can hear me. Yeah. And he'll be like, what you said to your client was this. So why, yeah. <laughs> why are you doing this? And I'm like, okay, okay. I get it. Yeah. So I'm pretty good, but I am human. So sometimes, or I show up, like I showed up to my therapy on Monday and said, my logical brain knows this. I know all of this mm-hmm. and I cannot seem to get past that, even though I'm well aware of it. And she said, oh, that's because you're thinking with your anxious brain, not your logical mm-hmm. brain. So mm-hmm. maybe as soon as you flip that around, you'll be able to process it. 
And I'm like, so true. And I was like, oh, thanks. Yeah. Okay. Right. And I've been fine since then. Yeah. Right. Like as soon as she said that to me, I was like, well, that clicked. Okay. Got it. Right. Like it, it's amazing yeah. how how often it's just a search for the right metaphor, the right idiom that mm -hmm. that clicks into like a puzzle piece into your brain to unlock that feeling of resolution. I, it happens to me all the time. Mm -hmm. What a great, that's up. like my big takeaway here because I have an anxious brain and I need mm -hmm. to ask myself, is this my anxious brain or my logical brain? And yeah. I know when the anxious brain comes, it's easy sure. to see. I'm worried about everything. <laughs> so yeah. it's not, it doesn't hide, you yeah. know? And um, it was so silly because yeah. I was just like, oh my gosh, this is goofy. Like, I don't know what's going on. And she was like, oh no, it's fine. It's just, you're just this thinking what you're your, doing. Yeah. This yeah. is what you're just thinking with your anxious brain right now. And I was like, all right, well, I guess I can have the rest of your 45 minutes back because I'm done. Like, I'm yeah. fine. I don't need you the rest of this time today. I'm doing yeah. okay. I mean, yeah. you, you help. It's just yeah. like, right, like, we're done here. Yeah. yeah. Oh, my goodness. But yeah, so I, that's my hardest part is, is having that and having my husband who knows me so well be like, you aren't doing what you're supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, yeah. oh. Thanks. I, I had a time where uh, my husband ha had heard me too. And he was like, so is everything okay? You sounded really like upset or frustrated. And I'm like, you weren't supposed to pick up on that. Really? <laughs> <laughs> was I? Like, oh no, if he picked up, but I think it's because he knows me so well, he could tell that the mm -hmm. level of my voice was going different ways. And I don't, I hope my client didn't realize that, <laughs> but, uh, but I know what you're talking about. It's, it's sometimes it's yeah. very helpful though, to have that other person be like, uh, Hey, check in with yourself. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yep. You know, what's he going will on? Call me the carpet. Yeah. And I love it. Yeah. I mean, He's really fantastic. Awesome. But, I'm I mean, so you know, glad that yeah. we met Maggie and Jamie. Like, yeah, I'm I know what a so good dynamic duo. Happy that you're in my world now. <laughs> That's, I was totally. so excited. Like, Jamie was like, "You don't understand. You have to listen to this podcast." And I was like, "Okay, <laughs> okay, <Sure. laughs> okay." I I feel like it's hard to wrap up and like ask you for given the complexity of the way we deal with our sort of efforts to build great things in the world just writ large I, it's hard to ask for like one like give us a piece of advice for listeners out there everywhere to tell us tell us what to do but i i wonder if we could reflect back to your your uh call the call you're describing right that clarity mm -hmm. call is there a question that you ask clients that you could ask listeners today that might that that you find spurs the right kind of internal reflection on mm -hmm. what might come next? Yeah. My my question is always, if you were daydreaming, you're just sitting there daydreaming about that perfect life, what does that day look like to you? You don't have any kind of preconceived notions about what you do in a day right now, like your daily life today and your feelings today have no impact. What is that perfect day in the life? What is it? Because that's that's our goal in working together is achieving that. Is where that is. Yeah. What yep. that looks yeah. like. So them that's visualizing lovely. it and talking out loud is also such a great thing because they get to actually process. And if you're working with a lot of ADHDers, which I'm assuming you do because you work with a lot of neurodivergent brains, yeah, they need that processing. They need to verbally talk about what they, what they're looking at, because they may not even know. I mean, I I can see asking that question, and a lot of people saying, "I don't know oh what gosh. that is." Yeah, and that's me. Like when you tell mm -hmm. me that, when you ask me to tell you about myself, I'm like, I'm 41. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Done. I have two kids, and I'm married. I know those <laughs> things. <laughs> right. 41. I have two kids. I have three dogs. What else would you like to know? obviously right, a like, cat <laughs> right i have a cat that's always on my lap yeah. like i like plants but yeah. i do i i have people start there and when they're like i don't know yeah. i'm like okay well what is what does the morning look like are you waking up alone do you have somebody in the bed with you is there mm -hmm. do you have blackout shades or is there sh light shining through like and i start to prop them yeah but i want to hear what that perfect day is like so that mm -hmm. way we can get there 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's great. And then Lovely. once I know what they want, I want them to have clarity as well as me. Yeah. 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 That's lovely. Well, Maggie, uh, you're wonderful. Thanks for hanging out yes, with us. Thank us, you so uh, much. Thank you. Tell us thank where you. folks can find you, all the right places that we should put in the show notes. Oh my gosh. Find me at MaggieIsley.com. Mm -hmm. Find me on Instagram at Maggie D, like Diane Isley. <laughs> at, um, I don't know. Where else do you want to find me? You can find me on my podcast, Be Unemployable. You can find me everywhere. I'm everywhere. You can find me on Facebook. It, it's Maggie Isley. Everywhere. Awesome. Literally. Yeah. I'm Easy literally enough. everywhere. You can find me wherever you want. All Google right. my well, name. We'll, we'll, I show we'll up. We'll put a couple of places in the show notes and we'll start the trail right. of breadcrumbs. Eventually, they'll be at your house. Uh, Maggie right. Isley, thank you uh, so much. We so appreciate you. Hope this I'll is not the, the last time we, uh, we talk to you uh, on the show. You're wonderful. Thank you. Oh and my gosh. Amazing. Thank you, everybody else, for downloading and listening to this show. We thank you for your time and your attention. Don't forget, if you have something to contribute to this conversation, we're heading over to the Show Talk channel in our Discord server, and you can join us right there by becoming a supporting member at the deluxe level. On behalf of Nikki Kinzer and Maggie D. As in Diane Isley, I'm Pete Wright. We'll see you next week right here on Taking Control, the ADHD podcast. Mm -hmm.